collapsed in Europe. When CBS introduced Major Dad, the Berlin Wall came down. This fall, we're introducing Lenny, Family Man, and Uncle Buck. Who will be the next to fall? Ay, 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 ay. Get ready for the funniest comedies in the free world. This is CBS. Back then, you were big and bad. You needed everything in Gatorade, but times have changed. Introducing Gatorade Light Thirst Quencher, because you still need fluids and minerals, but you definitely don't need as many calories. New Gatorade Light, low sodium, low calories, because you're still big and bad. But we just don't want you to get too big. New Gatorade Light. The freshest shape, smartest design, and most fun-loving fashions for children are available now at McAlpin's. And during our sidewalk sales, you'll find lots of ways to celebrate summer. Sugar and spice, and what's especially nice are your savings on girls' coordinates. From Hang 10, Buster Brown, Health Tech, and Ocean Pacific. Ships and snails, and whatever else boys get into, you'll love our great prices on boys' t-shirts and shorts. McAlpin's sidewalk sale at Lexington Mall and Turflin Mall. What a great way to celebrate summer. Jeep Wrangler's four-wheel drive makes it tough to get stuck now. Wrangler's resale value means you won't get stuck later. How do you lasso 177 horses? Jeep Comanche. With a resale value higher than Blazer, Bronco, or Trooper, now one of the best reasons for buying a Cherokee is selling it. See your Central Kentucky Jeep and Eagle dealers where you can expect the best. Safety concerns after a near drowning in a Lexington pool. The story after the All-Star game. Coming off me, I really didn't know where it was. I didn't know where it went or what. I just saw people reaching up in the upper deck, and later on I found out it hit the light tower. <laughs> <laughs> There's Jose Canseco. He's not smiling after making the last out, the last half inning. He's standing in front of the Ivy covered walls out there in right field and Wrigley Field. I think you can call that Hollywood and Vine, can't you? He's he's a Hollywood sort of character. Jose Canseco, Hollywood and Vine. Tell you, it's very unusual to walk Wade Boggs to get to Canseco. The injury that Canseco has had during the first part of the season certainly has something to do with that but as we said a home run triple and single and Dave Steve is in in relief 11 and 3 he's, he's had a couple of uh, blowout games go against him but he's been a wonderful pitcher again this season pitches to Ozzie Smith the switch hitter and ball one we're underway in the bottom of the third there's no score one hit for each club A shot to the shortstop Ripken. Ripken 79 consecutive games without an error and catches this ball a couple of inches off the ground. He can move around for a fellow his size. He is 6'5. Not many shortstops are that big. 1332 consecutive games. And should he play every day for the next five years, in June of 1995, he would catch Lou Gehrig, his consecutive game streak. Well, there's one of my favorite people in the game of baseball, Tony Gwynn. He's pinch hitting for Ramon Martinez, and he takes ball one. This fellow has won the National League batting championship three times. He's got a ways to go this year, four times for Tony. is ball two. Dave Steve pitched his collegiate baseball here in the state of Illinois. Pumps a strike. He played at SIU in Carbondale, Illinois with Itchy Jones as his coach down there. He was an outfielder for a long while. Breaking ball to Gwynn. You don't usually fool him like that. Two and two. That wicked slider from Dave Steve, slider, 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 that very unusual motion, that stiff back leg. You don't see him come off that leg like Nolan Ryan does, for instance, or Tom Stever when Tom was in his prime. 
That's low ball three. Steve doesn't push off the back leg like most power pitchers. It's almost that straight up and down. And that's one of the reasons a lot of people think that he has one good year, one bad year, one good year. He's having a good year this year. All right, you have to throw strikes to Tony Gwynn. He walks him. That's the first walk to the National League. And let's join Greg Gumbel. All right, Jack, thank you. With me, uh, National League starting pitcher Jack Armstrong. Uh, your very first full year in the major leagues, you get to start the National League All-Star game. How did it feel? Well, the full year ain't over yet, so... Uh, you know, but it did feel good. It was really fun to get out there, and uh, you know, it was just I wanted to give the team a good start and get us a you know a zero on the board first, and it, it was good. It worked out the way it did. We were talking a little bit about Roger Craig's approach to the game. Give us a little insight. It's a good approach. It's the approach we should take. We lost the last three. I say we. Our league has lost the last three, and he said it's uh, it's like the seventh game of the World Series, and he's going to play it to win. <laughs> All right, Jack. Congratulations to you. Good Thank game. You. Thank you very much. Jack. Go back home. <laughs> And here's Barry Larkin. He'll go to the game and run for Tony Gwynn. Gwynn injured a knee in a most recent Padre game. So he was a pinch hitter, drew a walk, replaced by Larkin. With one out here in the third inning. Speaking of injuries, it was Barry Larkin in the skills competition last year that injured his right throwing arm. And that put him out for the majority of the second half of the season. He's a threat to steal, and the batter is Dykstra. Fly to left his first time, and a pitch up. If Larkin is going to steal a base, he'll have to do it against Sandy Alomar, who has a terrific throwing arm, the Cleveland catcher. He played a few games for San Diego before being traded over to the Indians. Good lead. And pretty close. 21 yeah, the catcher, stolen bases for Larkin. The catcher can't do it alone. The pitcher has to contribute. Any catcher who throws out the majority of the runners, or half of the runners, has help from his pitching staff. And certainly Alomar has been getting it from his Cleveland pitching staff. There's close again on the throw by Steve. Giving the first base umpire, Dave Phillips, a couple of close, close ones to call. Larkin back in time. Steve with a good, quick move. Ooh, that was close. No score, bottom of the third. Larkin on at first with one out. And McGuire had to save that one. He played Dykstra straight away. He's a punch hitter for the most part, but he does have four home runs. Well, the problems that Dykstra had with the New York Mets was that he tried to lift everything. End up flying out to left field, to center field. He's hitting for an average more this year. And he hits it in the center for Griffey. Ken Griffey Jr. plays the wind and makes the catch. These outfielders, we saw them, we were watching them before the game, and they took plenty of time to make sure they knew what the wind was doing with the ball here at Wrigley Field. the Chicago fans cheer Ryan Sandberg. The catcher goes out. Alomar wants to make certain that he and Steve are on the same page. They had a home run derby here yesterday. Ryan Sandberg helped the National Leaguers win the home run hitting contest with this blast. The wind was blowing out differently yesterday and in a different direction than it is tonight, but he can still get it out there. He grounded a third his first time. Larkin at first, two gone. There's hitting room through the right side, and Sandberg is not bashful about going there, particularly when the wind is blowing as it is. Wire dropped that ball. Another quick move by Dave Steve to first base. Barry Larkin has been diving back. So Steve is really helping Alomar with the constant throws to first base. And McGuire, that ball rolling under Barry. Barry from Moeller High School in Cincinnati, the same school 
that Ken Griffey Jr. attended. Sandberg, no balls, no strikes, batting with two out. National Leaguers have only one hit from the scoreless bottom half of the third. There goes the runner. Save for the hit first strike. Well, you'd be the umpire in this one. How would you have called that one? Quite a throw by Sandy Alomar. Well, a nice play by Sachs on the short hop. You could see Larkin pick that right foot up and put it back down. That takes time, and it almost cost him. A good play by Sachs on the short hop. It appeared that Larkin did beat the play, however. High tag. Strong throw by Alomar online but a little short hop as you saw, saw Sachs dig it out of the dirt. Now Larkins at second with two out for Sandberg and he chops it to third and a good play by Boggs and uh, out at first and the inning is over. So another man left that's two for the National League. We have played three innings and there is no score. Don't I know you? Nice shoes. Yo, Penny City Wine. Are you sure we haven't met before? Now, where's that Tour de France thing? Nice shoes. I knew I should have taken the right turn at Albuquerque. Have you ever been to LA? Oh, don't skirt. That's what you think, dude. Mike, you won't join me in a spot of tea. Where'd you put your college ball? What are you doing here? I thought this was another Bono's commercial. Oh! Has anyone seen Bo's ball? I know, Kansas City. Nice shoes. Nice shoes. You ever play with Bo Dilly? Toyota. And it's like nothing you've ever seen. I can get up, move around, even walk through it. I didn't expect so much room in a family car. The all-new Previa. It's here. It's a Toyota. It was beautiful. And it's like nothing you've ever seen. You know, when you got it right, you got it right. Whether you're talking about this, You're talking about the one and only Diet Cola that does it for Ray, Diet Pepsi. You know, nothing tastes as good to me as Diet Pepsi. Hmm. All right, now, who is the wise guy? Diet Pepsi with 100% Nutri-Sweet. Now, that's the right one, baby. <laughs> this is what we were talking about with Barry Larkin. Watch how he picks the right foot up and puts it actually right back down. Well, that takes time, and it almost cost Barry a stolen base. He was just in there. And he'll stay in the game and play short, and Dennis Martinez will be the new pitcher. And you could see the good call by the umpire at second. Larkin plays shortstop, and the new pitcher is Dennis Martinez of the Montreal Expo. Six and seven record. And are there 18 first-time All-Stars here tonight? This fellow, Dennis, 35 years old, is the oldest of the first-time All-Stars, and he's happy for the honor. All of the great years he had with Baltimore. And look who he's pitching against. Ex-teammate, Cal Ripken, Jr. Ripken hit into a force out by way of shortstop his first time. And leads it off in the fourth inning of a scoreless game. Pitchers holding fourth. There's ball two. Miss Martinez knows how to pitch. He seldom gets blown out of a game, despite that record you see of six and seven. Fly ball foul. And out of play. They almost blew back on the field. That's the way the wind is moving. By the way, the wind has changed a little bit now. It's really going to hurt the batters. It was blowing toward the right field foul line. Now it is switched around and it's blowing almost directly into home plate. 
pitchers even with a further advantage they have a, an advantage anyway in an all-star game chopper for Sabo and the reason they have an advantage is because most of these hitters have never seen the pitchers that they're facing or limited time in seeing them routine play for Sabo there have not been a lot of balls hit hard tonight and those that are hit hard slow down very rapidly in this grass. What's the score, kid? One of the kid knows what the score is. We're scoreless in the fourth. Folks enjoying a nice pleasant evening at the park now. And batting for the second time is Ken Griffey Jr. One time I was interviewing his father. And I said, how's your boy doing in high school in baseball? He said, not so good. He said, in fact, he's not playing. He skies that one for Lenny Dykstra. Two out. And his father, Ken Griffey, told me that his son wasn't playing in high school because his grades weren't very good. He said the high school coach doesn't like it very much, but his mother and I won't let him play unless he gets the grades up. So apparently, paid off in a lot of directions. Seattle came into the American League in 1977. They have never had a starter until this year. Ken Griffey Jr., the first Seattle starter ever in the All-Star game. And it's Martinez to Mark McGuire, and a strike. Two out in the fourth. And with two out. Breaking ball. A low breaking pitch, and that's strike two. Well, things get better and better for the National League with Frank Bialone warming up in the bullpen. They've used Jack Armstrong, Ramon Martinez, Dennis Martinez, and Viola getting ready. 0-2 to McGuire. On the car, struck him out. It's a good pitch. Down in order goes the American League. Into the bottom of the fourth we go. No score. Toyota presents All-Around Champions. Mike Socia is a veteran catcher and known for his great skill at blocking the plate. He's also a devoted fundraiser for the Casa Colina Hospital. And through his enormous efforts, the hospital's wheelchair sports program has given traumatically injured patients a chance to play sports. Toyota is proud to contribute $1,000 to the Casa Colina Hospital. Toyota salutes all-around champions. The 1990 Toyota Celica. Look at it. Listen to it. Feel it. The all-new Toyota Celica. You'll love what it does to all your senses. Finally. There's just one place to call to get all your major name brand appliances fixed. GE, Whirlpool, Frigidaire, no matter where you bought them, just call Sears. So even if you didn't buy it at Sears, this truck will come fix it. How's that for service? There's a new attitude at Northwest Airlines, a new dedication to service. You can see it in our on-time performance, the best of the top seven U.S. airlines. That's our commitment, to make sure you're on time for your commitments. MCI Vision gives my business the big business long distance package the fortunate 500 get. Why MCI? They see us in a proper perspective. Introducing MCI Vision, big business long distance for your business. Hit a home run in the top of the 14th. The National League won it 4-3. What happened to the ball, Red? The clubhouse guy come to me and says, Red, he says, the guy caught the ball. He hit for a home run. He'd like to know if you, if you won it. And I says, yeah. And he says, well, you have to get an autographed ball for him from the whole team. So I gave him an autographed ball. And about two minutes later, another knock come on the door, and the same thing happened. He caught my ball, so I never did get the right one. <laughs> 
Now the old redhead is managing the Cardinals again. Here is a breaking pitch to Will Clark. Strike call. We're underway in the bottom of the fourth here at Wrigley Field. Clark singled. He has the only National League hit thus far. Got a hit in the first. That's outside, one and one. That home run by Shandy to Comiskey Park. This is the sixth game played, the sixth All-Star game played here in Chicago, the third at Wrigley Field. That kind of started the National League going. The American League held a 12 and 4 edge on the National League. But after 1950, the National League was 30 and 6 over the last 36 years or so. Let's join Pat O'Brien with a special guest. All right, Jack, thank you very much. With uh, Cubs fan extraordinaire uh, Bill Murray. And Bill, what does it mean to Chicago to have the All-Star game here? Uh, it means that it, there are long lines in the men's room. Uh, there are long lines at uh, Murphy's, all the bars and hot dog places around the neighborhood. Parking problems as usual. And a lot of people from out of town trying to get the tickets, you know. How long have you been working for the Chamber of Commerce? Uh, uh, no. All your life, you're so, everyone's sort of, an, un, in Chicago, everyone is an auxiliary uh, member of the Chamber of Commerce. We're all unofficially deputized. We can step in and sell something, real estate, or whatever is necessary, fix a parking ticket like that. It's Andre Dawson's birthday. How about a little, uh, uh... Happy birthday, dear Hawk. Happy birthday to you. This movie's coming out Friday. <laughs> That's a little superstitious, isn't it? Friday the 13th? <laughs> well, uh, lights in Wrigley Field, Friday the 13th, anything can happen. Jack, back to you guys. Uh, we went to great pains to put those two birds together. Pat O'Brien and Bill Murray. Here's a chomper to second and a big hop. To Steve Sachs over to McGuire. That's the first down in the fourth inning. You said the two birds together, and the two birds together saying happy birthday to the hawk. 36 years old today. And meanwhile, at the plate, the big thumper, Kevin Mitchell. He struck out his first time. That was against Bob Welsh. He faces Dave Steve. Now we have the umpires calling time for a moment. on the field out there in left field. Kevin Mitchell, the most valuable player in the National League last year, very upset at the beginning of the year because of a one-year contract. And with all of the money going around, you can kind of understand Mitchell's feelings. He thinks he deserves a multi-year contract with the Giants. You saw Ed Montague, he's the home plate umpire taking care of a, a minor problem. Dave Phillips, Steve Ripley, Mark Johnson. Dana DeMuth and Tim Welke is the other American League umpire. There was a light on across the street that was bothering the people in the home plate area. So now they have taken care of it. Mark is grounded out. There's one out. And Kevin Mitchell bats with the bases empty. Still the same for the American League behind Dave Steve. Steve won 137 games during the 80s. Bob Welch, the person that he is relieving, won 140 games. He went around on that one. Only Jack Morris of the Detroit Tigers won more games in the 80s than Welch and Steve. Steve ahead on the count to Mitchell. One ball, two strikes. score bottom of the fourth that's low and it's two and two out of the American League bullpen Brett Saberhagen pretty good relief man to have getting ready we've seen some talented pitchers here tonight and they are holding fourth there is a diving stop by Fox Mitchell is tagged by McGuire for the second out Mitchell is still not running full speed Nice play by Wade Boggs at third base. They overlook his defensive abilities. Box 
much blind as a fielder when he first came up. And when you have 200 plus hits seven years in a row, they still don't pay that much attention to your feeling. But that was a fine, fine play going to his left. There are two men gone. National League has had one hit, one walk, and that's the offense so far. Ball one to Andre. Switched around again, and it is as it was going toward the right field foul line in from left. And again, we have that problem with that light across the screen. Ah, uh, there's a party going on. There's a party going on right here. Up on one of the rooftops, and that light is bothering the batters at the home plate area. Maybe that's why we don't have many hits here tonight. You're trying to get that light turned off, but it's outside the ballpark. I mean, he has control. He has control of things inside the ballpark. There's what only, about outside? There's only one guy who can control that, and that's Pat O'Brien. He will go out there and turn that light off. That might be Pat O'Brien out there, <laughs> as a matter of fact. There are two out. And a strike call. One and one. Well, perhaps the folks out there were watching us on television and heard us report that and were nice enough to turn it out. At least they'll turn it out while the National League is back. There's a foul ball. One and two. Steve issued a walk earlier, but since then he's retired four in a row. So all he needs is one more out, and his night's work will be finished. And that one hit the bat as Andre ducked it. They're waiting outside of Waveland Avenue, and they have a power hitter up there in Andre Dawson, but the wind is against these folks. The wind is blowing one way, as you saw that sign say. In. Struck him out. He went around. First strikeout for Steve. He's retired five in a row, and we've completed four innings. And there is no score. Today's word is garbage. What's garbage? Well, garbage is anyone who's into drugs. If you're into drugs, don't get into my shoes. Mr. Robinson doesn't like garbage in his shoes. If you're into drugs, don't come into my neighborhood. Mr. Robinson doesn't like garbage in his neighborhood. Hello. Get a load of some unsolicited praise for my new film, Quick Change. Well, I haven't had this much fun all summer. Definitely his funniest movie. I haven't had this much fun all summer. Definitely his funniest movie. Unsolicited. But what's most heartwarming is the nice things that people have been saying about me. Bill Murray's the greatest. Fabulous. Great. Perfect. Fabulous. Great. Perfect. Fabulous. Yeah. For great. Perfect. I'm just going to watch Fabulous. a little more. Great. Perfect. Fabulous. Quick Change, great. rated R, starts Friday. Fabulous. Even a starting pitcher like me feels safe driving one of these. Heck, even he can run faster than this thing will go. Plus, it's not like there are a lot of other things to watch out for. Hey, watch out. But you don't drive to the ballpark in something like this, and you don't drive home in it either. So if you plan to drink, plan ahead. Line up a designated driver, someone who will get you home safely. Because driving out there is a whole lot different than driving in here. The preceding message was furnished by Major League Baseball. Real cup. I love being a cop. Telling the stories they thought they'd never live to tell. You're only allowed one oops. Starting Wednesday, July 18th, Top Cut. CBS Sports coverage of the 61st All-Star Game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Nike, who reminds you to just do it. And by IBM, whatever your size, whatever your needs, IBM is working to bring you the best solutions. 
Barry Bonds has entered the ball game. Kevin Mitchell is out of there. A lot of people talking about Sandberg being the MVP through the first half. What about Barry Bonds? He has racked up some monstrous numbers. And he'll play in that left field spot as Frank Viola takes over the pitching duties. And Alomar Sandy swings and fouls it back. Frank Viola facing some of his former opponents in the American League. He's number one in the National League in ERA. Five complete games. He's been a strong, strong pitcher for the Mets. And the inside corner, boy, he's been a perfect, almost perfect pitcher this year. Alomar fouled out to first his first time. Sandy Jr. And that's deflected, and he is going to beat it out. So that is the second hit for the American League. And only the third hit in the ball game. The National League with one, the second hit. And Sandy Alomar, as a rookie, starting for the Cleveland Indians, that ball had it gotten through, I doubt that Sandberg would make the play, but maybe Barry Larkin could have made the play. But when Viola put the glove on it, Sandberg had no chance. And now the batter is Steve Sachs. Pretty good hit and run man. Let's see if Tony La Russa wants to put something on. play ball one two pretty good combination down there Sax is trying to go the other way but when you have Sandberg and Larkin handling the ball you're gonna pull it off made to order right here and an easy double play Sax hit it hard I wonder if Roger Craig's gonna go more than an inning with Viola. Viola pitched Sunday against Atlanta. He went seven and a third inning. I'll tell you, it's a tough thing for managers in the All-Star game. You want to get everybody in there, but you don't want to run out of players if it goes extra innings. This is Julio Franco. He is pinch hitting for Dave Steve. One of the more unusual batting styles in the major leagues. He almost holds his bat parallel to the ground. Count, count goes to one and one. Franco went with from Philadelphia to Cleveland to Texas with that same batting style. Barry Larkin waits, scoops and throws. No runs, one hit, double play, nobody left. Bottom of the fifth inning, no score. and gets the queen a Bud Light. Oh. <laughs> Bud Light's clean, fresh taste won't fill you up, never lets you down. Henry, they're pop sauce. Everything else oh. is just a light. When choosing a new car, don't compromise. Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme SL is longer and wider, yet accelerates faster than Ford Taurus. It's more powerful, yet gets better highway gas mileage than Honda Accord. And it has a better owner satisfaction plan than both. Which obviously makes Cutlass Supreme the smarter choice. All the way around.
The pitching of Jack Armstrong set the tone for this one. First pitch to start an all-star game in his first full major league season. And then I guess one of the highlights of a low light game, the intentional walk to Boggs to pitch to Conseco, and the National Leaguers got him out. That was Ramon Martinez. And now the new pitcher, Brett Saberhagen. He is the third of the night. Strike call to Chris Sabo. We have a new second baseman for the American League team. And that's Julio Franco of the Texas Rangers. Sabo. One ball, one strike. Grounded to short his first time. Bottom of the fifth, no score. Third baseman, Boggs. Long throw. Got him. And the pitching prevails. Brett Saberhagen, the youngest pitcher in American League history to win the Cy Young Award back in 1985. A brilliant World Series against the Cardinals when the Royals came back. Boy, he has struggled this year. He also won the Cy Young Award last year. So two Cy Young Awards in the last six years for Brett Saberhagen. Despite that five and seven record, there are times when he is unhittable. Socia tries it. There's a strike. Well, they say good pitching will stop good hitting every time. We've seen some good hurling tonight. Socha lined to left his first time. Mike took it inside, one and one. Sosa uses the entire field when he hits. He has an unusual number of home runs for him this year. A total of eight. Most he's ever hit is ten in one year. That was last year. One ball, two strikes. American League has two hits. The National League only one. And a strikeout for Saberhagen. Jim Cott has one of the infielders with him. Well, only four players in the history of this game have 200 hits in each league. We're uh, fortunate to visit with one of them, Steve Sachs, All-Star National League, All-Star American League. What's this day like for you? Well, it's a special day. Uh, anytime you can come out and accomplish anything in this game, uh, as we were talking earlier, it's a plus. But uh, just to be here is a real joy. It's, uh, it's fun to participate in the game. All right, Jack. Steve Sachs drew a walk, stole a base, hit into a double play. And this is Barry Bond. There are two out. He is batting in the spot where Ozzy Smith started. And he cranks one up in the air. The wind hangs it up for Conseco. And down goes the National League. One, two, three on another day. That would have flown out of here. And now we have five scoreless innings. For 1990, some Oldsmobiles are new from the ground up. Others are new from the top down. Some have striking new profiles, while others have bold new side views. Some new Oldsmobiles are at home in front of mansions, and others are at home in front of everything else. This is a new has never been better. The one day we just looked at each other and knew it was time to go public. You have a dream to us an accurate picture of your capital D. When are we going to hear? It takes time. STP oil treatment under the worst possible conditions. In the taxi cabs in New York City, the result? Engine lift to air was reduced by up to 50%. And now there's an STP for your newer car, too. 
There's a new attitude at Northwest Airlines, a new dedication to service. You can see it in our on-time performance, the best of the top seven U.S. airlines. That's our commitment, to make sure you're on time for your commitments. A look from the Goodyear blimp at Wrigley Field, and the scoreboard tells you that the pitchers are holding for it. We look at the American League dugout. There's Kirby Puckett. We'll see him before this game is over. Roger Clemens, second from the left. George Bell, closest to you. Breaking ball over, but low to Ricky Henderson. We're underway in the sixth inning. Now this, here's the new third baseman, the very talented Tim Wallach. Shortstop is Sean Dunstan. And the Houston pitcher, Dave Smith, got a strike in there. He's a curveball pitcher, one ball, one strike. Dave doesn't throw real hard. A good fork ball. That's his out pitch. And he throws strikes and gets ahead on the count to Ricky Henderson, who is flying to right and struck out. Number one in the American League batting race. Foul tip keeps him alive. The top of the order for the American League, facing Dave Smith. I talked to a lot of clubhouse people around the National League. They tell me that this fellow, Dave Smith, is the most generous of all the players in the National League to the clubhouse people. That's a pretty good tip. Ricky Henderson. Skies at the left, the wind hangs it up. Nothing's going to jump out of here tonight. Dykstra wants it. Huh. How dare you, says Bonds. Are you kidding me, you little twerp? Get out of the way and let me catch that thing. <laughs> let the tall man have it. <laughs> Dykstra is waving Bonds away, but Barry obviously doesn't hear Lenny, and it's Barry, the taller player. <laughs> Dykstra looked like he was going to catch it in his mouth for a while. Wade Boggs. He has a single, one of the two American League hits, plus the intentional walk ahead of Conseco. And ball one from Dave Smith, and he gets one in now. One ball, one strike. By the way, each of these teams has ten pitchers. There's Conseco. He'll be next. Viola pitched one inning, gave up a scratch hit, struck out none, walked none. He followed Jack Armstrong, Ramon Martinez, Dennis Martinez to the mound. And now Dave Smith follows Frank Viola. Runs the count to three and one. Uh, uh, Jack, this has been a terrible offensive display so far. I mean, think about it. Two scratch hits, two infield hits by the American League. There's one through the hole by Bob. That might be the hardest hit base hit of the <laughs> of the evening. Something will happen before it's over. The only hit by the National League, a ball hit off the end of the bat by Will Clark. That's a 38 hopper through on the right side. Box second hit of the night. He's been on base three times. Well, the fans will pay attention now to Conseco. That ball went between Will Clark and Ryan Sandberg and died in the grass out there. There's Kelly Gruber, and he is going to be the runner for Boggs and take over third base. Gruber of the Blue Jays. Well, Boggs had a good night, an intentional walk, and two for two. That's not unusual for him. If you could pick an offensive MVP now, which you have to do, but you don't want to, it would have to be Wade Boggs. Yeah, scratch hit on the infield plus a 10 bouncer through there. Ball in the dirt to Sosha as Conseco bats. Well, he's got too many good hitters, too many power hitters in these lineups for something not to occur before long. There'll be an explosion, wind or no wind. And the wind has diminished a little bit as we view it. bat next is George Bell. There he is. And the count goes to ball two to Conseco. Gruber running the bases with one out.
it's a dangerous situation right here. A hitter, when he's ahead in the count, is not as apt to go at a bad ball. Two balls, no strike. Dave Smith is the pitcher, and he kept it away, and that's three and all. I would imagine La Russa will allow Sanseco to hit away right here. I mean, here's a guy who's 0 for 2. La Russa has Sanseco as one of his players, and I don't think, I think Tony wants him to pop one. He has struck out and grounded out to second. Well, let's watch this swing if he is swinging. No, he took it, 3 and 1. First one out. Well, he'll be swinging now if it's around the plate. There's a throw over there to try to get Gruber. Well, Clark's played the entire game to this point. Yeah, he's Let's the only national, the only National League first baseman. And they call a balk. A balk is called. So the umpires are serious about this game, and Gruber down to second base. I believe there's a plate umpire, Montague, who called that one. Although I heard two or three voices. Well, if it was a balk, Canseco should be coming back to first base. Gruber steals, or attempts to steal second. And it was ball four, and because the other runner advanced a base, the pitch right. counted. And so the walk counted, and there is no balk. And it's a runner at first and second. So the balk is off the records now because it was ball four, and the other runners right. advanced. And here is George Bell. Jeff Brantley, a little bulldog of the San Francisco Giants staff. Well, we saw him get whacked last Saturday by a line drive. See, I, I'm a little surprised right here that Ed Montague will allow Jose Canseco. And I think that's what La Russa is talking to him uh, about right now. The count was three and one, and a balk was called. Well, the question would be, was the balk called before the pitch was time called? And I don't think it was. So they're explaining it to the Russo. It's Dave Phillips, the umpire. Yeah, Montague called it. Ed Montague, the plate umpire, called it. And it was ball four. So they called a balk, but uh -huh. it was ball four. The other runner advanced, and so they give the base on balls to Conseco, and La Russa lost the argument. Two on, one out for George Bell, his first to bat. Ball one, and Dave Smith is heading for trouble. At second base, Kelly Gruber. And at first, Jose Conseco. And at the plate, George Bell. 17 home runs this year. And 60 runs batted in. Sixth inning, no score. Only four hits in this game to this point. Three of them by the American League. Sandberg trying to keep the runner close at second, and some rain comes. That breaking ball missed. Two and oh. First time in this ball game that either side has had two runners on. We had some rain here about 4.30 this evening. Now we get a little more. Bell missed it, 2 and 1. George Bell would like to do something for the Toronto people, and Ken Griffey waits to bat next. Cal Ripken was 0 for 2 while he was in the game, and Bell is batting in his spot. 2 on, 1 out, 6th inning, no score. Rain is rather light. The fans haven't started to scurry yet. That's ball three. Three and one. Three balls and a strike. There's a half a chance to start the runners, but probably not. Bell's a big free swinger. He missed it three and two. All in 
infielders are anticipating balls hit to them. You see Tim Wallach on the pitch, and most good infielders allow themselves to be up on the balls of their feet when the ball is thrown in the hitting area. I think they'll send the runners right down. We'll see. Three and two with one out. Bell crouching at the plate of the runners going. Struck him out and no throw. A double steal. Gruber swipes third. Conseco down to second base. The strike out of Bell is the second out of the inning. I think Mike Socia had second base in mind. Conseco and Gruber both running. But Wallach going over to third base. Socia really wanted to throw the ball to second base. You're right. And then he saw no one was covering, so he just held on to it. I wonder if they'll walk Griffey right here. They will. This will be the second walk of the inning by Dave Smith. So they hit by Boggs. He's been lifted for the pinch runner, plus the two walks. will load them up with two out. And who are we going to get to the plate? The leading home run hitter in baseball this year, Sasso Fielder. So the walk to Griffey, McGuire was 0 for 2, Mark McGuire 0 for 2, having struck out twice. And Sasso will come up to try to provide some fireworks in this scoreless game, sixth inning. Base had loaded two out. Oh, what a story, one of the biggest stories in baseball this year. 38 home runs in Japan last year. He has 28 home runs to lead the major leagues this year. And I guess you could say he's a comeback player of the year. He came back from Japan, right, to play in the United States again. I saw him in Florida this spring, and everybody was talking about how big he was, how overweight he was. But they don't talk about that anymore. All they talk about are the home runs he's been hitting. And, of course, he plays in a perfect ballpark for a perfect manager, Sparky Anderson and Tiger Stave. Well, we're going to have a pitching change. Manager Roger Craig goes to the bullpen. Here you see the home run leaders in the American League with Fielder on top with 28. And Jeff Brantley takes over the pitching duties. Scratch the door of a full-size Chevy half-ton pickup. Scratch a full-size Ford half-ton, which gives you better rust protection. This environmental chamber packs the results of two years of weather into just 25 days. Both trucks have two-side galvanized steel, but Chevy has more. So all you have to do is scratch the surface to see. Nobody's winning like The heartbeat of America, today's truck is Chevrolet. I don't know about you, but I don't like the way some auto service places treat women. I'm not a car expert, but I don't want to be treated like a child. And so many times I feel like the mechanic may be trying to pull one over on me, telling me my car needs something fixed when it probably doesn't. So I go to the Sears Auto Center. They're nice. I get a fair price. I trust them. And my car is ready when promised. That's all I want. And that's what I get. Sears. Now, the story that has Capitol Hill up in arms. We're not going to try to control what our people read and say and think. I, I, I'm about had The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us in supporting the National Archives celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. Base it loaded, two out, no score. Top of the six, Cecil Fielder at the plate. And Roger Craig, the manager, says to his bullpen ace, Jeff Brantley, get him out. Fielder's first at bat. Towering fly ball, and the center fielder, Dykstra, is there. American League leads three. They have stranded six and hit into a double play. We'll return to the 61st All-Star Game after this message. A word from your local station. Tennis pump. 
help from Reebok. It helps you get around the battlefield with a little more confidence. This is CBS. All your life, you've been lean and mean. You needed everything in Gatorade. But times change. That's why there's new Gatorade Light Thirst Quencher. Because you still need those fluids and minerals. But you definitely don't need as many calories. New Gatorade Light. Low sodium, low calorie. Because you'll always be mean. We just want to help you stay lean. New Gatorade Light. If you added up all the potato chips you've eaten during poker nights and play those games, you'd end up with some serious fun. But you still wouldn't have a taste as big as this little Gino pizza roll. Ooh, a tremendous taste of zesty pizza and a hot little bite-sized snack. A taste so big, it makes ordinary chips seem like small potatoes. Gino's pizza roll. The pizza way to snack. Mm. Jeep Wrangler's four-wheel drive makes it tough to get stuck now. Wrangler's resale value means you won't get stuck later. How do you lasso 177 horses? Jeep Comanche. With a resale value higher than Blazer, Bronco, or Trooper, now one of the best reasons for buying a Cherokee is selling it. See your Central Kentucky Jeep and Eagle dealers where you can expect the best. 89 years old and in desperate need of air conditioning. The story after the All-Star game. A light-hitting affair. Three hits for the American League, one for the National League. And here is Sean Dunstan. He'll bat for the first time. Where Barry Larkin had been batting. We'll see some swings against Saberhagen because Dunstan doesn't let much go by. Saber Hagan still on the mound. His second inning of work. And outside. They have some defensive changes. A few umbrellas are still open here as a bit of rain falls. Up high ball, too. At first base, it's Cecil Fielder who flied out with the base that loaded. New third baseman is Kelly Gruber who ended the game as a pinch runner. And we have a new shortstop as well, Ozzy Gian of the White Sox. Look out, folks. Ooh. That ball was a whistler off the bat of Dunstan. Two balls and a strike. Let's hope no one was hurt with that one. Here's the proud daddy, Sandy Alomar Sr. Has two sons playing in this game. Yeah, Jim Leland was the first base coach for the first four innings. Roger Craig giving Sandy a chance to coach now. What a proud papa he must be. Dunstan went out after it, but it's going to be caught. By George Bell, who was taken over in left field. Here comes Lenny Dyster. Let's look at him when he was a kid. He's going to kill us for this. going to kill us when he finds out we showed those pictures. He might sue us. And the rain increases. That's bad news. Bottom of the six, no score. And a strike to Dexter. Fly to left. Fly to center. He holds the right fielder one. Well, on another evening, the umpires might be inclined to cover the field and wait this thing out. A ball low to Lenny. He bats with one out. I tell you, with that rain coming down, there's nothing routine. Lenny Dykstra making the catch in the top of the six. You look up there, and there are about a thousand baseballs he's trying to catch. That one just missed, down and in, two balls and a strike, and that was with the base loaded when Dykstra made that catch. And what are you going to do with these umpires in this game and the rain? Bottom of the six, no score. a little blooper and it carries out to Bell for the second out and Greg Gumbel is standing by. All right, 
right, Jack, with me is Kevin Mitchell of the San Francisco Giants. And Tim McCarver said it. Pitchers have the advantage in this game. You guys have to face not only a fresh pitcher who's only out there to throw an inning or two, but one of the ten best in the league. Well, I think he's right about that. I'll tell you, uh, the pitchers they got over there, you know, they're top quality pitchers in baseball. And uh, it was just good to face uh, pitchers like uh, what we did face. Uh, it was good to see that. Uh, Kevin, one of the things that it says in the media guide is your nickname is Boogie Bear. Do you know what those fans out in the left field bleachers would have done to you if they'd known that? Oh, I, they, like they're doing now, I tell you. Um, coming to Chicago is, is not one of my favorite parts. Uh, <laughs> these fans here, they still get on me no matter what. Yeah. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. Thank you. Jack? Imagine a player of that sort moving from New York, the Mets, to San Diego, to San Francisco, and he's one of the best. Here's Sandberg with a two-ball no-strike count. Hits it hard, Griffey's after it. And down goes the National League, one, two, three. Now we played six innings and still no score. It's magic summer from Coca-Cola Classic. You never know wherever you go, you might find magic in a Coca-Cola Classic. Win a trip to see a new Kids on the Block concert in Los Angeles and other great prizes. You might find a prize certificate inside multi-packs of Coca-Cola Classic and win instantly. Can't be the can't be the real thing. Look out tomorrow. When the editors of Motor Week tested the Grand Prix Sports Sedan, they evaluated the things you'd expect. Room, comfort, function. But they also judge things no less important. Acceleration, braking, speed. The result, MotorWeek's driver's choice is America's best sedan with the Grand Prix Sports Sedan. From Pontiac, of course. Vision gives my business the big business long distance control the fortune at 500 get. Why MCI? They see us in the proper perspective. Introducing MCI Vision, big business long distance for your business. This airline does not exist. Uh, oh, the map doesn't show a town here. This mission is not happening. Well, then I guess we're not actually here. And we never told you this. You get shot here? Yes. Mel Gibson and Robert Downey Jr. are flying Air America, the first underground airline. If we actually existed. That's right. This film has not yet been rated. Starts Friday, August 10th at a theater near you. Now, scorers, we go into the seventh inning here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Look at that, only four hits. On the mound, it's Jeff Brantley. And at the plate, it is Sandy Alomar, and his brother, Roberto, is playing second base. That's nice, isn't it? Sandy has a hit, an infield hit, one for two. And the count goes to one ball, one strike. In right fielder, in right field, the straw man, Darryl Strawberry. Out of play. One ball, two strikes. The last brothers that played against each other in all-star competition, Lee May and his brother Carlos May back in 1972. How about that? Sandy Alomar Jr., the first catcher, rookie catcher, to start an all-star game. Another one out of play, I keeping think, the count one and two. I think what that shows you is how difficult it is to break into the catching position. Catchers usually, when they have some seasoning on them, are, are much better. When you come up, you've got more to worry about than you're hitting. You have your pitching staff to worry about. Throwing, defense, balls in the dirt, and hitting also. Now we've seen that with Todd Zeal, the uh, first-year full-time catcher for the Cardinals. His brother, Roberto, is not quite as big as Sandy Jr. I'll say Sandy Jr. is 6'5". Tough to play that position and be that tall. That ball's foul also, one and two. And the reason for that is you got to get down, you got to give a lot of low targets, you got to get 
down in the dirt. And I'm telling you, he has some great hands. Playing in the shadow of Benito Santiago of the Padres for so long. Got a shot at the Rookie of the Year award with Cleveland. And he takes the ball, two and two from Jeff Brantley. Brantley made only one pitch to end the sixth inning. He's working the seventh, following Jack Armstrong, Ramon Martinez, Dennis Martinez, Frank Viola, and Dave Smith to the hill. Two and two. He missed the outside corner. Alomar is leading off. Speaking of Benito Santiago, by the way, it was Jeff Brantley who broke his left arm. So Santiago could be playing against Alomar. Off the fist and fouls. Keeps it three and two. How many times do you see that? The numbers one and two catchers in an organization. One is traded, the number two guy in Alomar, in the offseason. And they could very well have started against each other in this year's All-Star game. And a foul tip, and that fell to Mike Socha. Boy, that's a tough job back at that dish. No dancing tonight, Mike. Mike wearing that protective cup behind the plate. And it appears to have hit him there. Yep. When it comes down from the top, it is much more forceful because it doesn't hit the ground first. But it's much more forceful. Mike appears to be all right. And these umpires ignore the rain, which is pounding.